Good morning, Falcons. I'm Abby Buell. And I'm Mrs. LaViolet, and this is the Falcon Report. Visit with Derek Najali, the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Pacific University today at 11.30 a.m. Head to the Career Center website to access the Zoom link. Here's Ellie with the Equity Minute. Happy second week of Black History Month, Falcons. One piece of recent Black history happened just last month at the presidential inauguration. Amanda Gorman, a 23-year-old Black woman and the nation's first ever youth poet laureate, read her poem, The Hill We Climbed, and not only captivated audiences, but also reminded us of the historical significance of Black poetry. Black poetry has shaped our nation from the very first published Black poet, Phyllis Wheatley, questioning the political and social injustices in 1773, to Harlem Renaissance poets like Claude McKay, who were censored for protest poetry about racial and economic inequities, to civil rights era poets like Margaret Walker, writing to instill pride and praise for freedom fighters by chronicling acts of resistance. So let us take a moment this month to celebrate and elevate Black poetry from not only Amanda Gorman, but also the powerful poets who inspired change before her. Some notable authors you might not be familiar with are Dudley Randall, Gwendolyn Brooks, and Audre Lorde. As always, keep learning and keep listening. And remember, Black history is American history. Seniors, don't forget the deadline for senior baby ads is due February 17th. Go to the link on the screen or in the video description for submissions. HHS is gearing up for hybrid learning. We're asynchronous on Thursday. The Falcon Report crew wants to help you prepare for this transition. Here are some hybrid hacks. Hey Falcons and welcome back to Hybrid Hacks. Let's go through what a normal day of hybrid learning will look like. Here's an aerial view of Hanford. There's the north, south, and main entrance as well as the library and ELA building entrance. Buses will still be up and running, it will just be at half capacity. And if you drive to school, be sure to fill out the Google form in the description to get a parking pass. As you enter any door, be sure to stay six feet apart or more from anyone around you. Be sure to fill out that attestation form before you enter the building. Sanitize your hands right when you enter the building. Unlike this guy. Quick heads up, lockers will not be in use. Reminder Falcons, eat breakfast before getting to school. See, Gilbert here didn't eat before he left because he didn't know that breakfast wasn't going to be provided by the school in the mornings. Don't be a Gilbert. You can still pick up your breakfast for the following week every Friday from 10.30 to 11.30. In your zero hour and first hour classes, you will get your temperature checked at the beginning of class. See how Gilbert just walks on past and ignores the teacher? Don't be a Gilbert. After the temperature check, you will sanitize your entire desk. You will also do this at the end of class as well. If you need to go to the bathroom, you will need to wipe down the hall pass that is provided by your teacher. Once you reach the bathroom, hang the hall pass on the hook and you're good to go. If all the hooks are filled by other hall passes, wait until someone comes out of the bathroom. When you return to class, you will need to wipe down the hall pass again. On the left hand side, you will see what not to do. Basically, don't be a Gilbert. The water fountains are not in use, but you can still fill up your water bottle. In the crowded hallways, you will want to stay on your right hand side at all times, six feet apart from everyone else. Pay attention and don't run into anyone. Basically, don't be a Gilbert. For lunch, everyone will stay at their own desk facing the same direction. On your first day back, you will get to pick your desk, but choose carefully because you are stuck with that spot and the people around you the rest of the year. Here are a couple more things to note. You have to stay on campus during lunch. Lunch pickup is daily at designated lunchtime from either the Falcon Gym Foyer or the Commons Cafe. Before your first class and after your last class, you have to stay off campus. Exceptions are athletic practice, extra help from a teacher, and running start classes in the commons. Here's the schedule for the freshman's first week back. And the schedule for the first week back for all grade levels. Pause the video to read some more need-to-know information. We know this was a lot of information to retain, so please feel free to watch the video again before you come back. We hope you have a wonderful and safe first day back, Falcons. 
CBC will be hosting a virtual open house on Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. Visit the link on the screen or in the video description to find out more and to have the chance to win one of three $1,000 scholarships. Freshmen, you're heading back into the classroom next week. You might be wondering how you're going to find all of your classes. Well, we're here to help. Let's check in with Ellie. Falcons, do you want to go on a virtual tour before your first day at Hanford? Check the link in the video description. Here's Falcon Trivia 2.0. Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Falcon Trivia 2.0, where we wholeheartedly agree with the age-old advice that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm your host, Scott Barthas. Here's today's question. Which of the eight blood types is the rarest, occurring in only 0.6% of the population? A, B positive, O negative, B negative, A, B negative. All right, time's up. Do you have your answer? Let's see if you got this one right. And the correct answer is A, B negative. According to the Red Cross, blood types are determined by the presence or absence of certain antigens, substances that can trigger an immune response if they are foreign to the body, and by a protein called the Rh factor, which can either be present, positive, or absent, negative. A-type blood has only the A antigen in the red cells and the B antibody in the plasma, and the opposite is true for B-type blood. AB-type blood has both A and B antigens in the red cells, and O-type blood has neither. That's today's Falcon Trivia 2.0 question. If you have any tricky tidbits to transfuse, type them out and transmit them to falcontrivia2.0 at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. That's all for today. I'm Mrs. LaViolet. And I'm Abby Buell, and this has been The Falcon Report.